Welcome to week two of creative writing. Last week you learned about character development, and you drafted an idea for an original protagonist of your own to create a story for this month. Today, we'll be talking about the different aspects of story structure. Please make sure that you viewed the Kurt Vonnegut Shapes of Stories video in addition to this one. This lesson will focus on story form and structure, conflict, crisis, resolution, and plot. First, I want to ask you a question. What makes you want to write? Some of you may be saying, I don't want to write, I just have to pass this class. Hopefully, a few of you really do want to write and are driven by the intrinsic need to tell stories. I know that I have something in me that just makes me have to tell stories. I've been a storyteller since I was a child. Children tend to be natural storytellers. They're eager to create and imagine, and they're happy to share their thoughts and dreams with others. Sir Ken Robinson says that children are not afraid to, of being wrong, and he's very right. Children will tell stories to anyone who will listen, whether their stories make sense or not, and this is a wonderful thing. When children grow up and become busy adults, they tend to stop telling as many stories. Luckily, some children grow up to be storytellers, and these natural storytellers have been entertaining us for thousands of years. People have been telling stories since caveman times. Ancient cave paintings and Egyptian hieroglyphics indicate that stories have been around forever. It seems likely that the earliest storytellers told stories out of the simple impulse to tell stories. They made themselves popular by distracting their listeners from a dull or dangerous evening with heroic exploits and a skill at creating suspense. People would ask, what happened next? And after that, then what happened? It really helped keep keep everybody's minds off of being eaten by wild animals or getting attacked by Viking ships. People have different reasons for why they tell stories, and natural storytellers do still exist. There are people who have never written a word a day in their lives, but can tell the most interesting and intricate stories. No matter what your reason is for telling stories, you must master plots, because no matter how beautiful your words are, if there's no plot, there's no story. So how do you know if you've written a story? E.M. Forrester, an author, probably put it best when he said the king died and the queen died as a narrative. But if we say the king died and the queen died of grief, then we have a story. It's only in the second assertion that connections are made, and it's in those connections that we get stories. Narrative is just a record of what happened. Things have to actually happen to people or characters for a plot to occur. That brings us to a necessary, the necessary components of a story, starting with conflict. To have a plot, you must have a character who has a conflict. Remember, in literature, only trouble is interesting. If you've watched the Kurt Vonnegut Shapes of Stories video, then you know what he says about stories where someone gets in trouble, then gets out of it again. People love that story. They never get tired of it. If you try to tell a story about two beautiful people who meet in college, fall in love, get married, are sexually compatible, have parents who love them and each other, have three beautiful, happy, healthy children, have good jobs, live until old age, and then die of natural causes in their sleep, you're going to put your audience to sleep, or bore them to death. That love story is probably fascinating to the people who are encapsulated in it, but to the rest of us, there's nothing to be told. Great love stories involve intense passion and huge conflict. Think about it. No romantic comedy begins with the couple together and happy. No tragedy begins or ends with the couple together and happy. Conflict is always present. A classic example of this is Romeo and Juliet. In that story, the two main characters love each other passionately, but their families are sworn enemies. There's the conflict. Or how about Othello? In that story, the two main characters love each other passionately, but he's black and she's white, and he has an enemy who wants to murder him. There's the conflict. And then there's Casablanca. He loves her passionately, but she doesn't fall in love with him until his passion has dissipated. Again, there's the conflict. Of course, love stories aren't the only stories that start with conflict. Think of all the movies you've seen. They all start with conflict. Harry Potter is an orphan who lives with his neglectful aunt and uncle. He finds out he's a wizard. Then he has to fight the most dangerous wizard who ever lived for seven consecutive years. There's the conflict. In Star Wars, the galaxy is in a state of civil war. The film begins with conflict. The Rebel Alliance has stolen plans for the Death Star, which is capable of annihilating entire planets. 
Plans for destroying the Death Star are stored in a droid that goes missing. Luke Skywalker sees the plans. He also learns that its father was killed by Darth Vader, and he finds out that he has the Force and is a Jedi himself. Princess Leia gets captured. Luke finds out that Darth Vader is his real father. There is conflict everywhere. So you get the picture. Conflict is important. Equally as important is the protagonist's desire to resolve the conflict. A character can't just have bad things happen to him or her and be completely out of control of the situation. Then we're back at a narrative where events are just being recorded. In order for the story to actually be a story, the character has to want something. Remember A Christmas Story? They play it every year, all day long on Christmas Day. Ralphie wants a Red Ryder BB gun, and his parents tell him that he can't have it and that'll shoot his eye out. That's his conflict. Conflict should be established as early on in the story as possible. If we're at the end of the first page and we don't know what the conflict is yet, there's a problem. That's why I will continually tell you all month that you need to start your story as close to the end as possible. Once conflict is established and developed in a story, the conflict must come to a crisis. The crisis will be the final turning point for your character, after which nothing will ever be the same. The main character will be faced with a decision. He'll have to make a choice, and then we'll have to act on a decision. As the action from the crisis falls, you'll need to introduce a sense of closure. This is where the resolution happens. Good stories begin with a hook. The first line is so important in a story because it is what encourages us to read more. I'll talk more about hooks in the Perspective in Voice video. So, to review, start your story by introducing a protagonist with a desire and a goal. Have your character express emotions and needs. This is important. An unfeeling narrator is one that we cannot identify with. Remember, readers like to see themselves in protagonists. Emotionally driven characters who express their needs have a certain humanity about them. Introduce obstacles. Without obstacles, you just have a narrative, not a story. Use tension from the obstacles to create conflict. Remember to introduce conflict as soon as possible. Once your character has experienced a crisis and is heading towards resolution, show how the character has changed. Also think about what universal issues or topics are presented in the story. We'll talk a bit more about this when we get to imagery. Of course, I can't let you go without giving you yet another Kurt Vonnegut quote. He just has so many brilliant things to say. So here it is. A story has to be a good date, because the reader can stop at any time. Remember, readers are selfish and have no compulsion to be decent about anything.